Today, we do the similar idea to similar triangles. We just extend it to similar polygons. And you have this in your notes already. Again, polygons are similar if all the angles are the same and the sides are proportional. In other words, you could find a number that you can multiply to go from one corresponding side to another. So here's our first example. Okay. In this polygon, I'm going to tell you that these angles are all the same. Have you ever seen this before for labeling angles? If they label an angle like that on all of them, they mean that they're the same. And then I use two lines for the next angle to show that those ones are the same. Sometimes you'll see an angle with a little dash in it to say that all of those ones are the same. There's different notations that are used to indicate that angles are the same. Now let's check if the sides are proportional. I like to go from the small one to the big one. What would I have to multiply by to get from 3 to 6? I'd have to multiply by 2. Does that also work here? Yes. yes. So we can say on this one that yes, these are similar. Draw two similar rectangles. Show using measurements that they are similar. So rectangles have all 90 degrees but you need to show that the sides are proportional. So you make up your own example, and I'm going to come around and look at them. So for this question, if you had this question on a quiz or a test. You would draw one rectangle, and then A bigger one. That looks good. Then maybe you did it with a ruler and actually measure it. Maybe you didn't. I'm going to say I made this side 2 and this side 5. And then you need to choose what you are going to multiply by to get here. Now I saw most of you multiplied by 2. That's perfectly fine. Could have multiplied by 3. If I multiply by 3, how long is this side? Six. If I multiply by three, how long should this side be? Fifteen. A rectangle has all 90 degree sides. Have you seen this symbol before to show a 90 degree angle? Yeah. Good. So if you draw a square in the corner where an angle is, it means that it's 90 degrees. Here is our first puzzle question. The two shapes are similar. First of all, they give you stuff. So if you have one color pen, I'm going to do all the given stuff in blue. It says angle AMT equals 70. Where would you label that? So I want you, okay, maybe your given stuff you'll do in pencil. Do it in pencil first label those angles, and then I'm going to write them in in a second to see if you were able to label them correctly. Question? Do you have a Band-Aid? I do not have a Band-Aid. I can make you a Band-Aid. So when you've got AMT to be 70, you go AMT, AMT. That cuts out that angle right there. That's where you'll label 70 degrees. In a little, little tiny circle means a degree sign. M-A-H, M-A-H, that one is 80. M-T-H, M-T-H, that makes this one right here, 
as 100 and AHT 110. So there's the four angles of our original shape. Then they tell us MA is 6, that's this length right here. TH is 4. MT is 6.3 and AH is 5.8. And then they tell us one thing on the other triangle, that ST is 4. So I did all of those ones in blue because those were all the things that were given to me. The angles are the easiest thing to start with because if you have similar shapes, the angles stay the same. So if those shapes are similar and they say that they are, then I can easily label this is the corresponding angle there, 70. This one has to be 80. This one has to be 100. And that one has to be 110. Now, in filling in the blanks here, now I can go and say, which one is TSO? TSO, that counts out the 70 degrees. TPO, that counts out the 110 degrees. POS. POS, that's the 100 degree one, and PTS, that's the 80 degree one. Now we have three sides to figure out. When you're figuring out the sides, we have to figure out what do we need to multiply by to go from here to here. How do I go from 6 to 4? So I take out my calculator. And if I'm trying to figure out what do I need to multiply by to get from 6 to 4, I could take 4 and divide it by 6. So I go to my calculator, which appears to be frozen. No, nope, it's all good. 4 divided by 6. Should this number be bigger than 1 or less than 1? If I'm going from 6 to 4, should be less than 1. So that's something you can do to help you figure out what you need to divide by, it's <laughs> .067. I'm multiplying by .0067. So now I need to do the same thing to go from 6.3 to this one. I go to my calculator. 6.3 times 0. Point, and you can you can keep as many sixes as you want until your calculator freezes like mine did. I shouldn't have done that. I guess I'll have to do mental math. It comes out to 4.2. Is that some easy mental math? Okay. Do you want me to do the rest by mental math? Yes. Okay. Whew. Four times 0 0.067 is going to be 2.67. Am I right? Someone have a calculator to check it? Hmm? And I'm going to can you check this one? Mental math, I'm going to say it's going to be 3.6. Ooh, no, it's not 3.6. I'm off. It is. It's going to be 3.8. Thank you. So then. S to O, we can label this one as 4.2. T to P, that was 3.8. And O to P, 2.67. Is my calculator still frozen? 4.2. Perfect.
Is everybody ready? Got everything written down? Have everything written down? Yes. Okay. Our last question for today before you get to work on some of the homework. If you look down from above, there's a castle, and there's a castle with a dragon in it. Okay? And the castle is in the shape of an octagon. So the castle is the white part. Now, around the castle is a moat. Do you know what a moat is? It's like water filled around so that nobody can attack your castle easy, right? Unless they have fighter jets, but that's not usually what happened when they built castles, okay? So there's a moat of water around the castle also makes an octagon. So now we have two shapes that are similar. It says each side of the moat is three meters long. So we're going to label that. This side is three, this side is three, this side is three, this side is three, this side is three. Whew, I might have trouble with the last two. No, I think I got it. This side is three, and this side is three. Okay, oh, I, yeah, the hardest side is always the last one. What do you think of it's going to be? Three. Oh, you guys are. Yeah, I missed the third side completely. Those sides are all three, and they're told that they're 1.4 times. So that means if I'm going from this one, which I'm going to put x because I don't know what it is, to this one, I'm going to have to multiply by 1.4. Point four. How do we find out what each side of the castle is? Well, what do we know? We know that if I took x, which I don't know, and I multiplied it by 1.4, I should get 3. This is called an algebraic equation because we put something that we don't know into an equation. And now we have to figure out how would I figure out what x is? So I want to figure out what x is. I have to figure out what kind of math would I have to do. If I know that x times 1.4 is 3, what would be the opposite of multiplying? Division. So I could go to my calculator and do 3 divided by 1.4. See what my calculator says when I do that. 3 divided by 1.4, oops, forgot the decimal, 2.14. This question didn't just ask, though, what x was. It asked us what the perimeter was. So we'd have 2.14 here, 2.14 there, 2.14 there. All of these sides would be 2.14. How many sides are there in an octagon? The perimeter would be, there's eight sides, all multiplied by 2.14. Something that's really cool about almost every single calculator, if you have your answer, you see how I have 2.14? And it even has more decimal places? Instead of having to retype that, if I just say, I know I want to multiply that by 8, if you just push multiply, your calculator will automatically take that answer that you just had and say, what would you like to multiply it by? I would like to multiply it by 8. So instead of having to write out 2.1428 and all those decimal places and then multiply by 8, I can just go multiply by 8 and the total perimeter is 17.14. Did this have units? Yes, it did. Everything is in meters. 
Perimeter isn't an area. Perimeter is a length. So we don't write meters squared or meters cubed. We just write meters. And so the perimeter of this shape is 17.14 meters. Now at the bottom of your page, there is a textbook assignment on page 157. You're going to work on question 3, 5 to 6, 10 and 12. 